Hello, for anyone who doesn't know me, my name is Casey Smith, a dear friend to Rose Calvert. I'm very honored to be standing up here today honoring my dearest friend Rose with this eulogy. I would like to thank everyone that has traveled great distances to be here today to honor Rose. Words cannot express how sad I am to hear of Rose's passing, but it comforts me to know that those 105 years that she lived were truly amazing. She lived her life to the fullest, and she made sure that she enjoyed every single minute of it. Rose had tackled many obstacles in her life. I would say that surviving the Titanic was one of those obstacles. She was that one in a million friend, a friend that you could tell anything to, and she would always be there to listen. Rose was a talented artist, and she loved to paint. She would get up every morning, drink a cup of tea, and paint the sunrise. Her paintings told us stories, stories of love, laughter, and adventure. They were very unique and one of a kind. Rose enjoyed collecting antique dishes, and she made sure that we never missed a thrift store sale every Saturday and attended every auction that was posted in the Sunday paper. Rose had many hobbies, but her passion was acting. She would sit up for hours and hours rehearsing the night before a big audition. Rose was a determined woman, and she made sure that she did her best at everything. When Rose wasn't painting, collect, collecting antiques, or act, acting, she rode her horse Molly along the beach in Santa Monica. Rose was born on April 5, 1895 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, to Mr. DeWitt Buchiter and Mrs. Ruth DeWitt Buchiter. As a child, Rose's parents knew that Rose would go, Rose would go on and do great things in her life. She was fearless. Rose was devastated when her father, Thomas, passed away from pneumonia when she was just 15 years old. Rose had stepped in and took, took in helping her mother at the seamstress shop in Philadelphia to make ends meet. They learned that together, through when hard times hit, to just keep pushing through because there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. As many of you know, Rose boarded the Titanic along with her mother several days after her 17th birthday in Southampton, England on April 10th, 1912. They were returning home from America after being in England for several months, visiting family and friends. After being on the ship for several days, the ship had hit an iceberg in the Atlantic, causing major damage to the ship. As the ship started to sink, her mother, Ruth, had been able to find a lifeboat and climb aboard. But Rose was nowhere to be found. Rose was busy making sure that other women and children were being, were being attended to and fetched to be put on the other lifeboats so that they could survive. As the ship, as the ship ran out of life boats, Rose had no choice but to stay on the ship until she no longer could. But fearless Rose managed to hang onto a floating door and whistle down a rescue boat to be rescued. This, this story always reminds me about how brave Rose was and how she could handle chaos. She was someone that I always wanted to be, and I learned so many things from her. She taught me to always tell yourself that you are brave even when you aren't, so that it gives you confidence. Rose married the love of her life, Lee Calvert, in 1915 in Santa Monica, California, the couple later moved to Cedar Rapids, Iowa in 1916 so that they could expand their construction company. They had two beautiful children, a daughter, Anna, and a son, Richard. Rose was a wonderful mother and made sure that her children always felt loved and supported. She encouraged them to always follow their dreams, even when they thought they were too old to still have dreams. Her son, Richard, graduated college when Rose was 70, and he was 46. By now, she was a grandma to two wonderful girls, Lizzie and Caroline. Rose will always be remembered for her fearlessness, but for her love of dance and fishing as well. She never missed a moment to dance with her children and grandchildren and to make sure she went out every weekend to get some ice fishing in before the spring and summer would hit. Rose is survived by her daughter Anna, son Richard, granddaughters Lizzie and Caroline, three great-granddaughters, and two great-grandsons. Rose is preceded in death by her parents Thomas and Ruth DeWitt Buchiter and her husband Lee Calvert. Thank you everyone for being here today.